one of the better seasons in league history. It's the Vikings and the Lions, and it comes your way next on Madden Football. First open in 2002, there's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. It's all about divisional matchups on this final day of the regular season, and we've got a compelling one in store here, as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Detroit Lions. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Lions team entering play. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Vikings, even with all the games we have broadcast together over the years, part. Started here, Riley Patterson, and we are underway from Ford Field. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they will be led out by the youngster, the rookie, their QB. And he's certainly putting together an MVP-type season, leading the league in both passing yards and touchdown passes. There have not been too many defense have been able to stop him or even slow him down. So he's got a sight set on another big game right here. Wide open receiver complete. And he's in for the score. And his spectacular season continues as he ties the NFL touchdown record. He is phenomenal. Week after week, Charles, when we see this offense operate, I don't know, they just seem to get more impressive. They certainly do, and let's face it, it's no surprise they're the best in the NFL in scoring. This team designs things well and executes even better. And here, it only takes a few snaps before they're in the end zone. That's how they demoralize teams. That's how they put them on notice. The extra point splits the uprights, and it's now a 7-0 game. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. This taken in at the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the first overall selection of the 2016 draft from Cal. It's Jared Goff. And the tendency for most of these guys is to want to match things right away because they have a lot of confidence in their talent, too. They just saw a big strike against their team, and you know they're thinking to themselves, I can get this back right now on one play. Well, if it's there, you take it, but otherwise, just go ahead and calm your team down. Run the offense, get things going, and see how things settle in. And despite injuries like these, Charles, with these guys missing, they've been able to keep that pursuit of perfection alive so far. That just shows the depth that they have on the roster and the guys who are serious about being ready when their number is called. Someone goes down, someone jumps in, and they don't skip a beat. I think this team has a bunch of those guys, and some of them will be called on again this week. Golf. This one complete to Tunyon underneath. Now he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. 18 yards the game for number 18. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play, won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going down. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot in the field when we take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. 
On first and ten, here's Gibbs. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Goff now looks to throw. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now that's a heck of a moment for your first sack of the game because if this long drive ends without a touchdown because of that sack, we're going to look back and say that might be one of the biggest plays of this contest. So now following the sack, Goff and the Lions needing to come up with something here on third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up the first and goal. When they needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver. And as this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Montgomery is in for a Lions touchdown. Riley Patterson now for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter and we're tied 7-7. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Taken at the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. And this is certainly not what you want to see in the final week of the year. We'll be back. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. They'll set up to throw. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful. They get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there, exactly as you described, an interception. After the interception, here's Gall. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. Hey, look at this defense for the Vikings. They're in the spot statistically that you don't want to be in against the pass. Number 32 in the league, dead last. Take those rankings, throw them right out the window <laughs> because this is what you prepare for. This is what you practice for. This is what you think about. The ultimate test, taking out the number one overall offense in the league. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. They'll fake the give. Now gone. Now that'll be caught by St. Brown. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll bring up second down. Gibbs straight ahead. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. That burst good for 20 and a first down. He had his eyes on the end zone once he hit the secondary, but they're finally able to slow him down. Yeah, and I've got to look at this one from the defensive point of view. You just mentioned finally able to slow him down. They've got to figure out a way to make that at the point of attack, at the line of scrimmage, because once he gets through, he's shredding them. Now it's Goff off the bootleg. 
Left side, that's caught by Mitchell. And in for the Lions, touchdown! James Mitchell, his first touchdown of the year. And the Lions have taken the lead. So they get their tight end away from the line to the outside, and he works his way in for six. Tight ends are not just blockers anymore. I don't know how many more times we need examples, but here's a great one. Gets to the outside, they give him the ball pretty quickly, and they trust him to get those extra yards, and boy, did he come through, bowling his way into the end zone after the nice catch. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that makes the score 14 to seven. And Patterson back out there to send this one away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And now out comes Minnesota. And they, if you just look at this game, Charles, on paper, they've got the edge, no doubt. They're hanging around the top of the NFC. On the other side, you got a squad that's towards the bottom of the NFC. But when we mentioned that to the coaches, they were having no part of it. Yeah, and I like how you said when we mentioned it. In fact, I mentioned it, and I upset them a little bit, didn't I? Because they wanted no part of that one, and I was reminded, like a five-year-old, this is the NFL. Any given Sunday, anything can happen. They are guarding against the upset. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. They'll see about converting this 30. They're going to look to throw. And under the Lions pressure, he's run down. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack. And it's going to lead him to fourth down. I know nowadays they give a lot of guys different things when they get to the sidelines after creating a big play, but just throw a cape on this guy because he single-handedly ended multiple drives. Interception earlier, sack on third down. Really should have a better game plan and stop how to contain him because he's affecting this game in so many ways. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. Good open field tackling there. A 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And the Lions will take over. And Detroit back in possession of the football. The partner just looking at some of the struggles they've had this season. The playoffs are not in their future. As they start to peer toward the offseason, what moves might they make? I think the running back position. And I know we talk all the time about the NFL being a passing league. But the teams that run the ball effectively, they're the ones that go deep into the playoffs and go to the Super Bowl. They have to upgrade here. And you and I both know in recent years in the draft, people have shied away from taking a runner early. But if there's that special one there, I say they go get him. And not a whole lot there. Maybe a yard to the 27. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Now it's gone. Trouble and he's taken down. Holding offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. It's a 42-yard punt, but eight on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And out now come the Vikings. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach. Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Second and a couple. Now back to throw. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And Jefferson's going to have the Vikings first down as he'll get this down inside the 40. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll look to throw. Throw left side, complete to Moss. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. They'll look 
to throw again. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. From the 20, here's second and three. So, CD, here we are. You look at how well this offense has played all year, 16-0. Now, in most years, they'd be at home right now enjoying time off for their perfect season, getting ready for the postseason. But this is the decade of the 2020, so that means 17 games are what's needed to get through a perfect season. Would a win here make them an all-timer for you? It would. It absolutely would. And I realize we're not comparing apples to apples because of the length of regular seasons. But if you think back to the 1972 Dolphins, they were 14-0 in the regular season. Three wins made them a Super Bowl champion, so they were 17-0 total. Imagine getting through 17 now and then continuing on and winning the Super Bowl. They're an all-timer team already for me. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Back to throw again. And he is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. They go play action here on first down. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. It'll go as nearly a loss of 10 on first and goal. So a disaster there. It goes as a nine-yard loss on the sack. Well, that's not how you hope to draw it up there on first and goal, CD, by taking a sack like that. Well, they tried to be aggressive, didn't they? They didn't want to try and work their way past the goal line. They wanted it right there on that play. Unfortunately, it backfired against them. Now they have to try and pick it up here moving forward. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Touchdown! A great effort there. His 21st touchdown of the season. And the Vikings are an extra point away from drawing level. What we just saw there is a goal line staple in today's football. You get an opportunity to throw the fade ball, put it up top, and let your athletic receiver go get it. Point after here coming up. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. A 10-play drive that time, and it's polished off by a Viking score. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And it'll come out to the 25 as Raymond will elect not to bring it out. The Lions offense set to take over. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking, my replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to disrupt these offenses. And typically, one guy makes a big play, and that can help change things. They'll be looking for disruption on both sides right now. These two teams all tied after one. Here's second and seven now from the 28. They'll fake the handoff. Now go off. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. Oh, he shifts past him. He did it again! And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. It's a gain of 16, and the Vikings have the first down as well. Another fine carry from the NFL's rushing leader, and quarterbacks typically dominating the MVP balloting, but I think you got to give this guy serious consideration, don't you? I agree totally. I mean, he's leading the league in rushing, and let's face it, partner, the running back renaissance in the NFL, it's real, and it's really helping teams along the way. He's a prime example. Got to give him strong consideration for MVP, Tom. 
So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. It's rare that a receiver of his caliber would drop one pass, but that's now two times he's had his mitts on one and lost it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're going to lose confidence in him, though, because of the track record. Such a good player, maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him in a critical spot. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. And this one is right through. And they take a 17-14 lead. Well, they're able to come away with the interception, Charles. They aren't able to move the ball all that much. However, they do get three out of it with a field goal. Yeah, and anytime you do force a turnover, you have to come out of it with points. Everybody wants six. They'll take the three there. Now it's their opportunity to do it again. No run back here for Raymond. This will be a touchback. And Detroit getting set to go now. Well, still early in this one, Charles, but the last time this offense was out there, they threw their first interception of the ball game, so trying to avoid repeating that mistake here on this drive. And to put a positive spin on it, at least it happened in the first half and not in a close game in the fourth quarter, but you're absolutely right, partner. One of the last things this offensive quarterback wants to witness again in this game. Kind of an obvious question, Charles, but anything you try to avoid after your first pick or you say it's one interception and we're still in the first half, I'm going to do the same thing. I think you want to avoid playing scared, you know, and put it into the mind of the quarterback that you've lost confidence in him. Make sure you get some throws that he's going to be able to complete, make him feel good about himself, and continue to run your offense. Back to throw, golf. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down, as that was not an easy one to hold on to. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty, and before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what Put you do best. Again. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it, touchdowns. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That's interference. Ethan. So they will wave off the flag and let the completion stand. Really great job by the receiver fighting through all the contact and still coming down with the football. All that great work and practice being put into the game. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's a second and seven. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Over the middle, it's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Here now, second and four. Now they'll run it on the toss. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. He'll drop to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And the Vikings are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. 
Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. A great play there. That's rushing touchdown number 20 on the year as his guys are able to extend their lead. Extra point right down the middle, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. Here comes Khalif Raymond from his end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 16. Goff now to throw. And that went to the right side and incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Now on third down, that pass knocked down in the backfield and incomplete. I can assure you, setting up a screen is much more difficult than it appears. It requires excellent timing from everyone on the offense, and a defense's number one goal is to throw that timing off. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. The Vikings ready to go again on offense. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 43 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. But they've certainly been successful throwing it around in this game. That's allowed them to move the ball on offense. But I've got to tell you, to watch them run the football and successfully, I'm not taking side. But to see the ball in the running back's hands, oh, that's football for me. And he's going to get his guys another first down. Back-to-back -back good runs to start the drive. This one, 13 yards. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And this one is incomplete. These two teams, you may remember, they met in Minnesota earlier in the year with the Vikings coming out victorious. So if they can win again here in Detroit, they'd pull off the season sweep. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. They'll drop the throw. Hard throw, incomplete. You know, he's been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. So three points there, and they continue to build this first half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps. And the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. Here's Raymond bringing it out. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Time for another look at this Lions offense. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Two yards on the pickup there, and it brings up third and five now. Let's get out of here with the 
Goff now looks to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. To throw is gone. This one complete to Tunyon underneath. So give him two yards there on the completion, and that'll make it second down. They'll fake the give. Now gone. He'll go right back to Tunyon. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Gibbs will try and pick it up. Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here as it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. This is just the last thing you want to see in the final week of the regular season. Well, I hope he's okay. We'll step aside and be right back. Going back to Gibbs on first down. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Second and nine. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rush just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Already a pair of third down conversions for them on this drive, but right now they need five yards on this third down try. The Vikings after him and they get there for the sack. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. He's the NFL sack leader coming into the game, and now that's two more that he's added to his total. He wants some separation from spot one and two in that sack category. On fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. Fair catch taken right at the 10-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And this will be caught by his big wide receiver. The result only four yards there on the play. And it'll be second down. Back to throw. Middle of the field to Jefferson. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. set up a throw got an open man finding Jefferson and he will have a Vikings first down and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches that's a big conversion there on third down because they did not want to give the ball up here late in the half they'd love to take the clock all the way down and score this will definitely help the cause throwing on first down but this one winds up to be incomplete second and ten Again, he'll drop to throw. And he comes back with one complete. The Vikings going to signal for the first to their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. The Lions now taking over late in this first half. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. Go, 
Now they'll try and set up the quarterback draw here. And he'll be taken down at the 18. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Gong. He gets this out wide to Gibbs. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And now it's third and three. Third and three. The final shot before break here. Golf. Throw left side to Reynolds. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. It's all down to this. Week 18 of the NFL regular season. Lots to be decided, so let's get right to it. We'll begin up at legendary Lambeau Field in Green Bay, and it's the Packers who are out in front in the second quarter. Aaron Jones has a touchdown on the ground. Next, we'll head east. It's on to Cincinnati as we check in on the Bengals at home at Paycor Stadium. And they've got the lead in their ball game over the visiting Cleveland Browns. Jamar Chase with a touchdown reception from Joe Burrow. Lastly, let's get you to Charlotte, North Carolina. Check on the Panthers at home at Bank of America Stadium. And that one all even as they play the visiting Bucks. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. It'll be Lions football to start the second half, and they trail here as we get back underway on EA Sports. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Micah Parsons in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. I'd say it's not panic time yet, but let's be honest about it. Empty possession here, not what you're looking for when you're down a couple of scores. Absolutely not. Trying to start the second half off on the right foot. Unfortunately, going to give the ball up. Here comes the Lions punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. And they'll keep leaning on the running game, back to the ground. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. 69 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. 
Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big-time, spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll set up to throw. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Offense was moving it a little bit, had him back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he is caught. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode Really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. They'll look to throw again. This will be caught just inside the 10. So five yards here, five on the play. And it's second down. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. Now they need two. Here's third down. Now back to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown, Vikings! Justin Jefferson with a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. And the Vikings had six to their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, that's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending it? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst, and if they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. Detroit's offense ready to take over. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Here's second and ten. Now gone. He'll find Reynolds over the middle. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. It's a gain of four. Brings up third and six. Goff now to throw. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. I think we've seen this before. If someone's down three scores, that situation there, it's just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, a bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out, not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little bit longer as this one goes. And here now the punter Fox as he sends this one away. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. 
Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at their own 43. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Kirby Joseph. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores, but yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception, they've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. Straight ahead with Gibbs here. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Here's Goff now on second down. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Golf. And that is incomplete. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. Well, that's a perfect example of how he was named NFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's game. He is just all around the football right now, isn't he? That he is, and it's funny because I talked with the coaching staff about drills that they do in practice, and one of them is called matching hands. And as soon as that hand is launched by the quarterback, you throw up the opposite hand and match that hand with the QB, and oftentimes you're able to knock it away as we just saw there. And Patterson back out there to send this one away. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. And now out comes Minnesota. The last drive for this offense, Charles, you remember it ended in one play, that quick interception, but they do still have the lead as they start this drive here. And that's something to focus on for them as well because it's not quite no harm, no foul, but the interception, hey, shake it off, move on. Hasn't cost your team the lead, and now it's time to rebound. And the quarterback and his teammates, they can add to the lead with a good drive here. And second and 10, he'll look to throw again. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. There he goes, left side. Touchdown, Vikings. A big play. 76 yards, and the Vikings are able to stretch out their lead. Charles, that's a pretty good response from a rookie quarterback. He's had his struggles in this game, including the interception on the last drive, but there he takes him down the field and puts it in the end zone. I agree with everything you just said right there, and there's a silver lining to all of this, his resiliency, because let's face it, when things are going bad and you're a youngster, they often continue to go bad. But in his mind and his actions, he said, this stops right here. And how about the positive play he just turned in? And it'll come out to the 25 as Raymond will elect not to bring it out. The Lions offense heading out as we give you a look at the playoff race coming into the weekend in the NFC. And it's all come down to this, hasn't it? Final week of the regular season. As this year's playoffs play out anything like the regular season has gone, could be in for a wild and fun month of January. And we can break the rules because we can look ahead. All right, there's not a coach out there that's ever said to their team, all right, let's look three, three weeks down the road. It's always right here, right now. Forget that. Think about what the playoffs are going to look like. The teams that we see that are already in, the teams that are trying to get in, we could have some great matchups. That's good. Another run for Gibbs here. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. 
He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. On second down, here's Gibbs. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. A loss of one, now a loss of two, and they're staring at a third and 13. And not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. This is taken at about the 14. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. They're continuing to rock and roll. And at intermission, you know, maybe sometimes you fear after such a good first half of a letdown, but that, that wasn't the case. And what I remember most about being in those situations is exactly what you're talking about. You almost have that sense of satisfaction. You're like, ah, we're doing really well. But I remember one time someone saying, winning's fun, but so is playing really well. Why would we want to do otherwise? That was, that was the message to keep the intensity up, to keep things going. And that's exactly what we're seeing here from this team. Yeah, it's helped them extend their lead. On third down, he'll drop to throw. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at the 20. They'll start things off with a give to Gibbs. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Play action. It's Goff. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. An attempt at a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And they will take over first and 10. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They're just looking to do more of the same. They were good in the first half. They've extended their lead so far here in the second half. I don't know, they're just looking good on all, hitting on all cylinders right now. And sometimes that means a head coach who really has a finger on the pulse of a team may not have anything to say at all. May tell the rest just of the coaches, up a little bit. just back it off a little bit. This team has it under control. I remember hearing about Bob Knight years ago in basketball, getting ready to give the final speech before the gold medal game in 84. And on the board, Michael Jordan wrote, had written, Coach, after all we've been through, there's no way we're losing tonight. He didn't even give a pregame speech. Wow, interesting. Well, right now, no speech is needed. But following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. Well, week 18, this is just when you hope everybody can get through the regular season healthy, but the medical staff is going to have to take a look here, and we'll step aside. He'll look to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A good pick up there, a 22. 
Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking to throw to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. So first and ten, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. On the give, here's McBride, and he'll take this down to the 33. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. On second down, here's McBride. Call that a gain of five as the clock ticks inside of two minutes to go now in the third. A yard all they need, but it's third down. He'll drop to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. Going for it, it's Mitchell. And he is not going anywhere. They stop him for no gain. He needed two. He barely got back to the line of scrimmage. And the Lions will take over. Partner, when you see a running play stop short like that, you just know that the defensive front, they won the battle of leverage and created the push back into the opposing backfield. And for the offensive coordinator, whether you had one yard to go or 20 yards to go on fourth down, now you're probably saying, oh, maybe I should have passed it, right? Yeah, hindsight is always 20-20. And they start things off with a carry by Gibbs here. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. No big surprise, Micah Parsons doing what he does so well, dropping him for a loss. Now Goff. His throw incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield of man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And the football going back to the Vikings offense. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offense is called four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. Well, there's your leading receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage, putting on another clinic well over 100 yards. Are we taking notes? We should be, right? Because I'm going to go back and watch this tape and really enjoy what I'm seeing, the route running, competing for the football, just breaking down a defense. Pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. One quarter remains here as the regular season starts to wind down. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Here's McBride. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here. Third and five. He'll look to throw. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked by Tracy Walker. And the Lions are going to have it here at their own 32-yard line. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ballgame. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be one Peyton Manning through 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. How'd things turn out for him? 
I think okay. He's a guy in all the commercials now, right? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. he's doing okay. Setting up the screen. This is Gibbs. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, back door, to them, and that time worked well for a solid game. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. To throw is Goff. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They go ahead and snap it. Gone. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with a football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. The Lions turned away on fourth down. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. Jefferson going to go in motion right. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and here's McBride instead. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Back to throw here. And that will be incomplete. Well, fourth quarter with a three-score lead here, Charles, but they're still going back to the air and looking for more points. Well, with this game well in hand, it's an opportunity for the guys to come off the bench and get a chance to play. And a lot of coaches, they want to run their full playbook no matter who's on the field. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three, and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know, if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clipped him off in your headset so you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. No run back here for Raymond. This will be a touchback. So out now come the Lions. And they unfortunately are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. The Goff's throw complete here on target to Tunyon. He'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. It's a gain of six. Here's Gaw. Ball had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. Oh, I thought he had that one, and that was nearly a big third down conversion to give this drive some life. Instead, they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball. Desperation time for Goff on fourth. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. Keep in mind, he had the three-interception game last week, so we requested to talk with him this week. He was all smiles. He's still all smile. Yeah, we didn't jinx him at all, did we? No. Because ordinarily that happens, uh, <laughs> things fall off. But not in this case. I think a lot of it goes back to his technique. His ability to see the quarterback throw the ball while understanding where the receiver is running his route allows him to make a lot of plays on the football, and he's taking it away at a really high rate. 
It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three. And now a run with McBride. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. We've called a lot of games, but we don't normally talk about inside linebackers being that fleet of foot, do we? No, he was able to get outside there to make that play. Yeah, and you know what makes them faster? Their ability to read plays, understand what offenses are trying. And now off to the races, down the right side. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. 35 yards. And the Vikings look poised to reach 17-0 as they add on to their lead. We see this a lot on third and short yardage, especially down here in the red zone. They're gonna sell out to stop the run, try and hold them to a field goal. But once the running back gets past the first wave, the resistance can evaporate after that. And he not only picks up the first, but he takes it all the way into the end zone. Point after, right down the middle. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. Here's Raymond bringing it out. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So here come the Lions now. Facing a big fourth quarter deficit here, things not looking good. You know, this offense, though, they've been in the top half of the NFL so far this season, but in this one, well, their defense has really struggled. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Here's a second and five. Goff now looks to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. From the gun on third down, Goff. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. Well, someone's closing in on the league lead in sacks. He came into the game in the top five. Now you add two more to his total. Here we go. Here comes the Lions punter now, standing just outside his own goal line. That's taken at around the 40. This will be a 41-yard punt, three on the return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they just continue to roll right along, really. This has the looks of yet another victory as they hope to polish it off here in quarter number four. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Brian Branch from the secondary in on the tackle. Second and nine from the 44. At the 44-yard line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. A first down there on a pickup of 25. Well, there's absolutely been no stopping this offense today. They already have the big lead, obviously. Here in the fourth quarter, they could coast to the end, but right now they're not passing up any chances to put up some garbage time yardage. And, partner, why would they? Because who knows the next time you'll be playing as well as you have today. When you're in that zone, you go ahead and take full advantage of it. You don't worry about your opponent. You just worry about what you're doing. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. When this offense gathers to watch the tape, they're going to like a lot of what they saw. They put up big numbers, but they might fast forward through that last play. Oh, there won't be any fast forwarding, partner. I've sat in those sessions before. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Aiden Hutchinson. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Well, partner, I would say just avoid play action. But that's not just been the problem. This defense, they've been getting pressure on all types of pass plays and really piling up the sacks in this contest. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. 
Defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. And he missed it. It's no good. But that's just a minor blip here in what's been a thoroughly dominating performance. Yeah, 55 yards is anything but a gimme. You've got to really concentrate on your leg swing and proper technique. This time, though, he's unable to convert. And Detroit getting set to go now. Well, I think that the folks here had hoped that maybe this home atmosphere would carry their guys to a surprise victory, but it does not appear that that's going to be the case. There's too much to handle on the other side in this one. And he's going to be taken down. Goff is sacked. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Guys with his talent in the pocket aren't supposed to be getting hit like this. And you know an intense conversation with the offensive line is going to occur after this one. Might not be from him, but the offensive line coach will have plenty to say about this game. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Here's Goff. It's complete to Williams. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. Here's Goff. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but definitely not today. His team trailing by multiple touchdowns and a late sack, just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. Here comes the Lions punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. On second down, here's Mitchell. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they're powering through, and they're controlling this game. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. A run here with McBride. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. On third down. McBride, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. They'll keep it on the ground. It's McBride, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Here's a second and eight. A gain of two brings up second and eight at the 46-yard line. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on all those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. 
so for the Vikings, they finish off a perfect regular season, 17-0. And now they'll have the week off as they get set to go after a Super Bowl title. Meanwhile, for the Lions, they will indeed limp to the finish line, unfortunately, as they close out a 6-11 campaign. And this is a team that has a few good pieces in place, but could stand to get deeper and younger all around. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.